Hello everyone, today we're going to be going over the tutorial for Bridge Designer, 2016 edition. When you first launch Bridge Designer, this is what's going to come up. Here you'll be looking at your elevation view and your deck cross section. And this shows how many meters away the landscape you have to put your bridge on is. So for instance, here, our bridge has to be 44 meters in length. And from top to bottom, it's 24 meters. Next, this is the contest information. If you are participating in a contest, you would use yes with a four character code or a six character code. Next up, you're going to be seeing how many piers you want, uh, your cable anchors, and your abutments. Now, this is depending on what your teacher tells you to put in. Next, we will select the deck material and the truck loading. This is, of course, depending on what your teacher tells you, what you would select. Here you can select a template, which will show you how to build a bridge, basically. Um, you can choose templates to understand a little bit better on how to use the software. And it, it helps you with, um, with getting started. People that get started maybe want to go through a template. What I did is I tried all of these templates and whichever one I found the best and the least cost, I went with and then and then I just advanced it. I made it better, made it cost less, and found out the perfect things to use for the bridge, such as material, length, etc. So after you choose your template, which in my case is going to be none, you would press next again. Here it asks design by. You just put your name. Um, I'm just going to put in a random name. John Frederick. After you put that name in, it's just going to tell you this. And you would press finish. Then you're going to be brought to a screen like this. It shows you your starting cost. And what you want to do is you always want to have your road set up. So you're going to have to draw a road. This is going to be the base road that you would draw. So I'm going to go with a really, really easy, simple bridge design, which is with triangles like this. And I'll get back with you guys once I finish it. So I finished the bridge design and the way I was able to draw it is using the member tool which will let you draw out how long you want it and which point you want it to stop. For me, mine is just going to be like this, this, and you would just draw the triangles from there. Then you're going to go for the test. And as you can see, the bridge failed. The reason the bridge failed is right here. So the tension and force strength always has to be less than one. If your tension and compression, same with your compression, if they're both above one, then the bridge will fail. It has to be at least 0.99 to be exact. 0.99 to lower is what you want for it not to fail. Like I said, if your tension or compression is higher then 0.99, you won't be able to proceed with the bridge. As you can see, it failed. To fix this, if the number is higher than 0.99, you're going to select it, just like I am holding the left mouse button. You select it, and you press the increase button. Now, you're going to increase your tension and compression both. You can select multiple items by holding control and selecting what you would like to select just like this or you can drag to select multiple things after this since the number is higher than 0.99 you would increase the size and test again it broke again because it needs to be increased more you increase again it failed again now, as you can see, we had the this one, 
and this one highlighted, but they're less than 0.99. So we are able to select less, but we still have to increase the size. Still failed, but look, now these aren't highlighted anymore. So now these are highlighted. We must go with these and increase again. There we go. The bridge is staying up, but with the weight of the truck, the bridge fails. And it highlights what needs to be increased. You highlight them, you increase it, and you test it again. And the bridge fails in the middle. That means it's these two. You go ahead and increase it, and the bridge should be working now. That's it. Now, another thing in the software is the material type. As you can see, there's carbon steel, high strength, low alloy steel, and quenched and tempered steel. The quenched and tempered steel is the most expensive. The high strength, low alloy steel is the middle point, And the carbon steel is the least expensive. Now, to test... You would select all and you can just click and change it to quench tempered steel or high strength low alloy steel. You can change it to any material and you can select any of them to change. Just like that. See, these are now carbon steel. These right here are high strength low alloy steel. So it won't be a problem to change the materials for each one because you can change any one of these members to any material that is available to you. Now for this. These are solid bars and hollow tubes. The tubes cost less but are less durable. There's also grid choices. You have the coarse drawing grid, the medium drawing grid, and the fine drawing grid. This will let you select where you want your joints to be lined up at. So as you can see this is one square but if I select the other grid then I have a wider variety of putting these. If I select the fine grid, then it's it basically allows me to put it anywhere I want. Something that I like doing is I like taking all of my members and decreasing one. Then I test it and I see what happens. What's wrong? Once it gives me the information, then I take a look. And look, it's only one thing. We increase its size. The bridge is working. And we went down in cost. That's the thing with the software. You're going to have lots of trial and errors throughout your bridge. The more trials you go through, the more you'll learn. You want to try out all the materials? Go for it. See which one works best, which one is the lowest cost for your bridge, and figure out why the bridge keeps failing from time to time. Just like I said, as you can see here, the compression strength is zero, but the tension strength is 0.19. Since it's really, really low, you can decrease the size, and the bridge will still work. As you can see, it still works. Now it's 0.27. You can still decrease it even more. You can decrease it until it becomes 0.99. Once it reaches 1, you cannot decrease it anymore. Unless if you change the material, that's a different story. The next thing we're going to be going over is with the animation, you can pause it. You can unpause it. See, I can pause it. Or you can adjust how slow or quick you want the truck to go. This will not impact the bridge's structure. Or its durability. The bridge will still fail 
even if you make the truck go slower or faster, it will still fail if it already has. Now you can press this reverse button to restart the animation. Let's say you get to a point and the bridge breaks. You're going to have to press this button to reset the animation if you want to relook at it. Here you can select if you want a background, ambient, tr the truck in general. Um, I don't, I don't really recommend not having a truck because you're not gonna know where the truck failed. You can also select if you want the smoothing, the exaggeration, or the colors. Me personally, I don't like the exaggeration. I'd rather just show it without exaggeration. But for the tutorial, I'm going to be having the exaggeration on. It also tells you how fast the truck is going every kilometer per hour. Now the next thing we're going to be going over is the colors on the bridge. You might be asking, why is there red? Why is there blue? Why is there some white? If a member is white, that means it has no force on it. If a member is red, that means it has a force on it. If a member is blue, that means it has a force on it. Once again, the blue is the tension and the red is the compression force. But as you can see on our bridge, when the truck crosses, the colors change. See over here, this is all, this is light. This is a little dark, not too much. This is light, light. But as the, br the truck crosses, it changes its colors. See, so this is light. That's light. It becomes really, really dark. Here, we'll restart it just to show you. So as you can see, this is a light red, and it just changes to dark. All the top parts change to dark because of the amount of force that's being acted upon it. If a piece of your bridge is really, really, really dark, then that means you cannot make it smaller for a better cost. If a part is a really light color, like a really, really light red, for instance here, you would want that member to get smaller to save you some money. If you want to resort from one bridge design and go back to your older bridge designs, you can look at the iteration. You can click on this drop down menu and it brings up all of the bridge designs that you've created within that save. And you can see which ones failed and which ones passed. And you can also see the cost and your trials. So if you remember, I told you that you need to keep going through your trials. If a trial goes wrong, you can go back to your old trial and try again and make it better. This is an undo button, basically. It goes back one iteration, and this goes forward an iteration. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed, and I really hope you understand it. Until next time, bye-bye.